Well, I, actually, there were several, a uh, few reasons, I should say. Number one, I think the most important reason for me was that the concept I found very interesting. You know, I have my own shop, and I've had it since I've, you know, been in my early 20s. And so, I'm always interested in marketing uh, fashion. Mm -hmm. And I found the idea very interesting to uh, be able to go from um, runway to consumer. I thought it was a great idea and I wanted to know more about it. So that was number one. Of course, no, I've never been to Singapore and so that was another attraction for me. And um, I guess those are the main two attractions. And then of course to see, you know, what Singapore a fashion young fashion designers uh, were doing and what was going on here fashion-wise. <laughs> to see the, that transition in such a short period of time, it's kind of like, it's like watching, uh, what do you call it, stopgap photography. I mean, you, could, you watch something appear and develop like in one view. Uh, the bloggers are now the uh, the tastemakers, they're sitting on the front row of fashion shows, they're, you know, in such a short period of time, bloggers within their own industries have become really prominent, taking the place of the traditional fashion editors. Recently, I was, uh, I had a project where I had to do some styling, and they were saying, you can make your own ideas and categories and style them. I said, okay. And one of my categories was fashion blogger <laughs> on the front row. The Devil Wears Prada one, I mean, I'm still hearing about the coats, getting yes. the coats and the coats. And that's really a funny story because the director and writer of Devil Wears Prada, David Frankel, who's a great guy who I had worked with several times before, the original script didn't have that scene and several other of these montage scenes where it was changing it was like another coat another coat another coat or when um, um, that other scene when um, oh god my head's going the walking th the, the the transition scene of going to work oh yes yes when she when her clothes change yeah going behind the taxi cab going behind the truck yeah. he wrote that one in and he would come into the audience and say I just wrote a new scene, it's a montage. I go, another montage? Okay, thank you. Another 25 outfits you just wrote. <laughs> thank you, David, thank you. But it was fun, I mean, because those were the scenes in the end that people, I don't know, they got a big kick out of that. Cause, and they're so I'm still getting asked about the, the, the throwing of the coats and uh, that. So I think that made an impression on people. I would definitely vote, and you know, Politics is one of my hobbies. I actually, my education was, I went to NYU, I studied government, philosophy, and history, and languages. Wow. So politics has continued to be a secret, not a secret hobby, but a hobby of mine. Not a, I never went into it professionally, mm -hmm. but I'm very, very attuned to it. Well, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Actually, today, as far as I'm concerned today, the politics on TV is the reality show because it is reality. It's not made up reality. So I don't normally, I'm not normally attracted to these reality shows, but that's the one I'm attracted to. I'm excited to see what happens too. It's, uh, but at some point I was thinking, God, this is becoming like a sport. <laughs> Even the way the, um, you know, the commentators, the vocabulary that they use, it sounds like, it's beginning to sound like a, whether it's a boxing match or a football game or something, the way it's being approached, it's like, <laughs> it's really interesting.